Hey guys, good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Um, why don't we just start? Try to answer any questions you have. Great play Temple last year with a new coach. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this team this year that you'll be facing? Yeah, um, you know I look at Temple. You can see I've known Stan for a long time, Coach Drayton. He's a an excellent football coach. Uh, he's been at the highest level, National Football League, national championships. Uh, Stan knows how to prepare a team. You can see um, that they're getting better. You can see that there's a, a an identity to their team, what they're going to be, what he wants them to be. Um, so, you know, and I, I know, as always, a lot of guys on that Temple team that would have liked to come to Rutgers, right? So when you play a, a team that has a chip on their shoulder, uh, it's a challenge. So. Um, when you go back and watch that game last year, you say, well, the score was what it was. I mean, it, it, that score was not indicative of what that game was. That score was based on takeaways. We we struggled to move the football against their defense, and I think their defense is playing well again. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, something that, you know, we're getting ready for. They do some things that are a little bit different. Um, so that's challenging. And then, obviously, in the special teams realm, um, Coach Shire, uh, knows intimately what we do, and uh, so we got to make sure that we, um, you know, button button it all up, and make sure that there's nothing that uh, that he can take advantage of from his knowledge of what we do. So, what have you seen from Gavin in terms of the way he's kind of navigating the ups and downs of this early part of his development, and you know, processing mistakes, learning from them, and things like that? I think he, you know, there's no doubt both he and Evan are both getting better in leaps and bounds, right? And how can you not when you go through that process and you play in live games? Um, he wish he could have that interception back. It was similar to the one at BC. That's what he and I talked about is, you know, there's enough mistakes out there to make new ones every week. We don't want to make the same ones. Uh, but then again, you know, you look at what he does on that one touchdown throw, I mean, that was a laser beam, right? And then when he runs the football, he's a threat. Every time that ball is snapped and it's in his hands, he's a threat. You better defend him. You better have a guy accounted for him. Because if you don't, he has the ability to take it a long way. So uh, I, I see him getting better. Uh, again, I don't want to rush the process, though. I think they're both playing well. And we just got to let them keep playing. And eventually, this thing will work itself out. It's just not now. Greg Rashad Rochelle got some snaps at, at running back. He's listed as a wide receiver. Is it fair to see him in a kind of an Aaron Crookshank role of an offensive weapon that could just do a bunch of different things with the ball in his hand? I think that's a very good, uh, very good uh, assessment of who he is. He's a very good athlete and is dangerous with the ball in his hands. So we've been working him at both positions. With AY down, we kind of he heavily, more heavily favor him towards running back. But I think he, he's going to be a really good receiver too. As he grows and you know spends more time with JB in the weight room and all those things, uh, he's already changed his body a little bit. But I'm, I, I can see this guy being just a little, a little muscle man, you know, out there. It can really run, and that's going to be the key because he's going to get hit, right? And uh, so we're working to we're working to get that done. Understand you don't want to dive too much into Noah's injury, but is there a game or at least a timeline for when you? would be expecting him to get back on the practice field or game situation? No, not really. Um, you know, he is progressing. So th he's doing more things this week than he did last week. I think it's all going to be, OK, so how does this go this week? If this goes well, then he keeps progressing onward. Um, it's too early still to tell, um, you know, can he play this week? I don't know. It's all going to depend on how, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday how fast he progresses, but you know we're just we're just playing it by ear. Um, but I don't have like a, a landmark. You know, this game is when I expect them. No. Greg, you started the same five offensive linemen again this past week. Is it safe to say that those guys are your top five? And then kind of piggybacking off of that a little bit, we also saw quite a bit of a youth movement. So uh, this past weekend, how is the the unit as a whole developing? Well, I think when you talk about five, you got to you got to include Mike Schifani in there. So make it six. Okay, those we have six. In our, my our opinion, as a staff, we have six starting linemen. We just, uh, you know, could it be the other way around? Sure, it could. It's just you know, it's very close. 
but they all play a, a great deal inside. We have a kind of a three-man rotation going there. So uh, I like that. I'd like to see where we get a rotation going at tackle. We're not quite there yet. I think C.J. Hansen's coming on. Um, I think Kamar Missouri's coming on. So if those guys keep coming, now we can get into a little more rotation at the tackle spot too. Um, but that's kind of just like at quarterback, at tackle, at guard. Uh, I'd like to do it some at center. I'd like to keep playing more and more people. Um, just philosophically, I think that's what college football is becoming. You know, you have to make sure that everybody gets to play. I think they prepare better that way. Um, so we're going to make every attempt to do that, but not at the cost of winning a game. So that's going to be always the, the ultimate barrage, you know, level. Uh, to not, I know you're focused on Temple now, but to look a little bit ahead, the Big Ten just announced the Iowa game. Big Ten opener is going to be a night game. It's going to be your first night game here with fans in the stands since you came back. Uh, what do you anticipate that, and what is your kind of general thoughts on, on night games here at home? I think your first part was exactly where I'm I, I am totally focused on one thing and that's a two o'clock kick at Lincoln Financial Field um, God willing I'm still around then we'll talk about that next week but uh, I am really excited about two o'clock at Lincoln Financial Field though I, I've already heard and I don't know how accurate it is but I've heard there's 14 to 20 buses full of Rutgers students going down and I know our fans after watching that BC turnout uh, the way our fans showed up at Boston, uh, I, I really anticipate we're going to have a heck of a Rutgers turnout down at the Lincoln Financial Field. Great stadium, great venue. Um, I hear there's pep rallies and everything else. I love it. I love it. Let's let's paint that place scarlet. You know, that's – now, are they scarlet? No, they're cherry, right? Yeah, so let's paint it scarlet. Yep. Can you talk about the rotation of cornerback? How happy are you play with those guys who are, who are going in and out? You said cornerback, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really think that we have some good corners on our team. Um, certainly Robert's playing at a very high level. Uh, I think Max is capable of playing even better than he is. He's playing well. I think Max can play. There's another level for Max. Uh, I, I expect to see that this weekend. Um, and then Braz, I think, is really playing at a high level as well. Kess Abraham's playing at a high level. Uh, you know, there's a guy in the in the wings who's waiting, Carnell Davis, who I think is going to be a really good corner as well. So, um, you know, we have some young guys that we're developing, but we have these four guys that are that are playing right now, and I think doing a good job. So we'll keep rotating, again, uh, to the whole philosophy of let's keep playing a lot of people as long as you have guys that can win the game. Make sure they're all in there. Uh, what stood out about uh, Al Shadi through these first uh, couple games? Well, I think the same thing you see, I see. Right uh, when he touches the ball, we all kind of hold our breath. He's got a different gear than you know people we've had around here. I mean, Al Shadi is legitimately fast, fast. Uh, but so is Rochelle. I mean, uh, who asked about Rashad? Yeah, I mean he he's he's got another gear too. One thing that that I am excited about is our team speed is markedly getting better each year, and uh, you know I just believe speed. You know, I don't like to say speed kills. I think that's corny. But I think speed is hugely eff effective in the game of football when you have fast people. They cover up mistakes well. They allow you to take advantage of things well. So uh, we'll continue to, to hunt that uh, at every position. Okay. Uh, just quick, any injury updates on uh, Aaron or Matt Alamo? Aaron and Matt are getting better. Don't know if they'll be available Saturday. That's still um, we're waiting to see. Those are two you know, key guys for us that we were counting on to play a lot of football. So uh, I hope we get them back, but never at the cost of their, their well-being. So, you know, that's on the doctors and the, and the trainers and the medical staff. Just to piggyback on that, what does the running back depth chart kind of look like when Aaron does get back? I don't know, right? I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a work in progress right now. Um, you know, right now you can legitimately say there's – Two, maybe three guys getting touches, right? Uh, you know, Sam, I think, showed what he can do. We've seen that in, in camp and in practice, but now you guys got to see a little bit of it. Um, so, yeah, it's a good running back room. That's what I like, and we just got to make sure that we play to each guy's strengths. And you can do that if you're organized. You can make sure you have the right guys in to do the right things for their strengths. And uh, as they kind of improve their weaknesses, 
then they can do it. They can do it all. But I think it's important that uh, Coach Oreck's doing a great job with the running backs. He really is. He's he's got them all playing at a high level, a high level of understanding, uh, especially for young kids. I mean, with the exception of uh, Kyle, who's really he's not exactly an old guy, but you know he's played some football around here. The rest of them are young pups, and they're and they're doing a good job. They're they're executing their assignments for the most part. So that's a, that's a positive. See you down in Philly, guys. Or I'll see you before that, but let's get as many people down there as we can. Thanks.